the Tuesday edition, or this week's edition. Um, and we have uh, uh, our special guest today is Director Lindsay Manfrin of Health and Human Services at Yim Hill County. Um, but I also want to encourage folks to speak to their community, obviously, about the thing that's in front of all of us right now, which is um, a windstorm, uh, low humidity, high temperature, and lots and lots of smoke and lots and lots of fires. So please address that as well. And I'd love to, I, I will do the introductions and then hand it over to Director Manfrin. We have uh, Mayor Scott Hill from the city of McMinnville with us today. We've got Councillor uh, Kelly Minky from the city of McMinnville today. We've got Representative Ron Noble. And sometimes it even says McMinnville behind your name, but sometimes it also says Carlton. So uh, we've got Councillor Remy Drabkin or her porch from the city of McMinnville. We've got HHS Director Lindsay Manfred. We have Joyce Fleming from Congresswoman Bonamici's office. We've got Takesha Widrow from uh, Sheridan, uh, all kinds of Sheridan places. We have uh, Representative Noble's phone. We have Abhishek Stone from SEGCOR, and we have Joya Goodrum from the McMinnville Chamber of Commerce. Welcome today. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Director Manfred to talk about um, the global pandemic and what it looks like at home right now. So thank you for joining us. Yeah, thank you, Casey. Thanks, everyone. Uh, so we are definitely um, feeling a little bit better about where we're at uh, than we were in the previous several weeks. Uh, after the 4th of July, we experienced a, a pretty rapid and sharp increase in our overall COVID-19 cases, and we were seeing multiple days in a row where we were having well over 20 cases, um, and that really prompted us to, to make some changes in our response level as well. We hired um, a handful of temporary staff to really take on a lot more of the case investigation, um, contact tracing, and wraparound support work that, that our team has been doing. Um, and that has been a tremendous uh, relief for our teams to be able to get that outside support in. Um, and and the, those folks are working out really great. And we intend to keep them on for likely at least six months and we'll be reevaluating, of course, as we see our um, numbers changing. Uh, we did begin about uh, two weeks ago to see a decline. We um, are bracing ourselves for uh, what may have occurred over Labor Day weekend, of course. We really do think that it was the 4th of July um, and gatherings and events that uh, really sparked our, um, our steep increase in cases. And it takes several weeks for those things to play out because, of course, it can take up to two weeks for anyone to, to get those to, to get sick. And then all of those those things, as you can imagine, just ripple out and it takes a while. And so we really think that we were just beginning to feel um, like we were getting to the recovery stage of that. Um, and, and now we've had Labor Day weekend and we're, we're hopeful that we will not see the other, uh, 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 an increase like we did over the other holiday weekend, but we are definitely preparing for that in case we do. Um, overall, right now we have 652 cases of COVID-19. Um, that is the latest number from um, this morning. And um, by and large, we're seeing the majority of spread happen in the McMinnville area, although it is throughout the entire county. So I always hesitate to say it's in one area more than the others because um, really it's, it's all over our county as it is all over our state, but we are seeing the, the, larger, uh, the largest growing area um, of confirmed cases in, in McMinnville for sure. Um, we continue to just provide the messaging to, to individuals to please keep your social circles small. We really, uh, that seems to be one of the best things that we can do to protect ourselves and protect those around us is just keep those gatherings small, be outside when there's not air quality issues as much as possible um, and um, just being thoughtful about uh, the, the ways in which you're interacting with, with other people is, is certainly important. We are working very closely with all of our schools, um, both public and private schools. They've all sent in their plans for what they, um, how they will handle um, various aspects of on-site learning or hybrid models and, and public health has reviewed all of those plans. We have a team of staff that have been reviewing them, so it's not just one person that's reviewing them. We have an environmental health perspective, communicable disease perspective, and emergency management perspective that all go into reviewing those plans and providing feedback to them around things that they could um, consider um, and um, uh, just assuring that everyone knows what to do if something were to happen, if so, if there was a case and, and those types of things, they know who to contact with our team. Um, 
Those have been going really well, although we don't have any, we are not able to open schools right now. There are a handful of our school districts who have um, decided that they will open for um, some very special exceptions, which is allowable under the current um, ODE and governor's order. And so those schools, um, we've, we've again worked closely with them so that, that they are feeling confident that they, they know how to do that safely um, and um, just providing technical assistance as, as we're able to. Um, we are also making sure that we keep them informed as individuals within the, their district or their private school um, catchment area um, do test positive. That's not always by name because we do not share anything that we don't have to share that isn't um, relevant, but we are notifying them when they do have cases because part of the requirement for them to be open is that during even during that exception is that no staff or students have tested positive within the last 14 days. And so we, we had uh, when that came out, we very quickly uh, made sure that we got a, a mechanism in place to be able to provide that information to them on a daily basis so that they can use it for, for good decision making. Yeah, um, we can we should have updated school numbers um, coming out this week to look at um, uh, where we're at. Um, if once we hit the threshold of being um, at or below 30 um, cases per 100,000, we our schools would be eligible to open K through 12. So um, definitely thinking about how that will look and, and what that will look like. Um, I'm not aware of any schools making, um, I think all the schools have lots of different plans in place for the, if this and this and this and this, so that they can be ready to act. Um, but uh, we know that those have to be in place for, for a couple of weeks. And so um, we'll, we'll watch those numbers closely and continue to, to watch them closely so that we can move forward when um, it is safe to do so. So those are my general updates, and I would just be happy to answer any questions if there are questions people have. Thank you for that great update. And in fact, um, I was developing questions as I went along, and then you kept answering them. So <laughs> it looks like Mayor Hill has a question for you. Uh, Lindsay, I know that in McMinnville, we've been having great success on our weekends with our McMinnville Dine Out. Mm -hmm. And I know you can't share uh, any of the, the tracing of individuals that have COVID-19. But from my perspective, and I talk to everyone uh, associated with that, they're doing a very good job uh, from a restaurant standpoint of the masks, the gloves, everything appropriate. We have social distancing happening. Uh, we have even people walking up and down the street with masks on. Uh, is there a concern on your part uh, of how we've expanded out into the street, giving us an ample opportunity to have social distancing and still being able to get out and eat. Uh, I, I, haven't pref I haven't prepared you for that, so I know it's on the spot, but just a thought, because we've got a lot of people watching from McMinnville. Yeah, you know, I think that it's a, uh, a great step that the city has taken to allow um, extended, you know, capacity for restaurants um, in a really safe manner. So yes, I think as long as folks are uh, really following the rules, and it sounds like for the most part people are, that that, that is a, a really nice way to sort of meet both of those needs. Um, and, and it will be interesting to see, of course, as we, we begin to move into the rainy season, what happens, that those things certainly get more challenging. But I think, um, if anything, uh, Yamhill County and, and McMinnville are certainly good at thinking creatively. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's interesting. I had an opportunity to drop down yesterday, even though it was uh, the holiday that they extended the closure to uh, Monday night. And there were people out, even with the smoke all around them. And uh, we know that they're going through the last weekend of September at this point because of weather. Great. Great. Thank you very much. Any other questions? Joya Goodrum has a question. Hey, Lindsay, thank you for being here today. Uh, so I've been hearing from some of our businesses, and this is probably not something that you have a lot of information on, but I'm going to say it anyway. Um, there's a group of people going around town and they're filing complaints about all the restaurants and the not social distancing and they didn't have a mask on and all this other stuff. And I heard that there were like 3,600 reports of that. Can you, can you speak to that? And I think it went to OSHA but I don't think it was going to OHA, but you know, there's a real concern for our businesses when people are complaining when there's really not, they're complaining for the sake of complaining. And because I know some of those businesses mm -hmm. and I know how rigid they are about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. And there's a huge concern that they're gonna get fined even though 
you know, just because somebody filed a complaint about them. So I don't know if, if you can talk to that. I can speak to it a little bit. I, I don't have um, specific details. Uh, the information, so there's a number of ways that people can make uh, complaints, right? And one, the, the main way is through the OHA portal on their website. And what happens after that is that they, based on what the what type of facility is the complaint is made about, they funnel it to OSHA um, if it seems like it's more of an employee type thing or to the regulating or licensing body if it seems like it's more of a consumer to um, um, employee thing. So if it's just around, if it's, it's more around the workplace for employees, it goes to OSHA, otherwise it goes somewhere else. Public health handles the ones that are related to things that we license. So restaurants, um, uh, food, food pool lodging essentially is what, what we, re we we license. And so those have been coming to us. We certainly haven't seen anything in the volume that, that you mentioned that, that could mean that they were getting funneled to the centralized location um, and maybe even being filtered out before they get to us um, because we do receive those, um, we receive complaints from that, they'll push them to us. Um, and then of course we do have um, a handful of individuals that will just complain directly to us and we follow up. Um, our approach and my understanding from what I hear of what, um, OSHA and the state's approaches to really is to go out there and really check things out, provide information, education, resources if needed. And then if that if, if they observe and then that behavior continues, so they continue to get complaints, then they may move into more of a regulatory state. But we are always starting with that information sharing and, and just checking in with them. Thank you so much. I really appreciate that. And also all of the work that you've been doing on behalf of our community. Thank you. You're welcome. Truly, thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, do you want to weigh in at all, um, share any thoughts that you might have about um, how uh, fire and smoke might be affecting people from a public health perspective? I absolutely. I mean, you're good at that. Yeah, yes, absolutely. So um, certainly this this feels uh, unprecedented for, for Oregon right now. I mean, we always have a wildfire season. We always prepare for it, both from an emergency management and a public health perspective. Um, but sort of waking up today was was definitely unusual with the volume of what we're seeing and the number of um, evacuations that are needing to take place across our state and things like that. So um, in terms of, of health, you know, public health role really falls into two categories. One is around air quality. Um, and then the other one is really around helping set up, um, if needed, sheltering and, and things of that nature. Um, working, of course, closely with our emergency manager, Brian, and, and uh, their team. Uh, right now, you know, we're watching the air quality indexes very closely. There are some areas in our state, like down in Detroit, Detroit area where it's hazardous, where it's just, it's um, the highest level. Um, in Yamhill County, we, I, this morning when we woke up, it was okay, although I'm watching out my window and it's it's moving in. So um, you can sort of see it moving in from the Southeast. Um, and we definitely want people to be uh, safe out there. So it is hazardous to your health. This smoke is, I probably don't have to tell people, but it's not good for you. Um, specifically individuals who have any sort of underlying condition, this can really exacerbate a number of things, including, you know, the obvious ones like asthma, but other things, you know, COPD and, and heart conditions, certainly. So we really recommend that as much as possible, people please stay indoors. Um, that is uh, really, really critical. Um, you can wear face coverings. You know, I think that depending on the type you have, it's going to vary and how effective that is or is not um, in terms of providing any, any sort of protection. Um, but certainly if you can see the smoke, um, then you're breathing it in and it's getting into your body. Body and it's not it's not healthy. So we definitely want people to, to, to do what they can to avoid it. Um, and then we will continue to work with our partnering counties and trying to help find places for those um, people who are in the, the awful position of having to be evacuated to hopefully find uh, safe and secure places for them to, um, to stay until they can go back home. Great, thank you very much. Yeah, um, Marion County is, um, and for the people out there in the community, Marion County is looking for um, spaces for evacuees from the Sandy M Canyon. So, um, in, in fact, one of the county commissioners lives in the Sandy, Sandy M Canyon. So he he experienced the same thing as everybody else in fleeing last night. Wow. Yeah. Do we have any other questions for Director Manfred or comments? Okay, great. Thank you very much for joining us and um, sharing from a very knowledgeable perspective. Yeah. And thank you to your team.
Thank you. All right, um, I'd love to go to Joyce Fleming from Congresswoman Bonamici's office um, next. What would you like to tell people in the community and what is the Congresswoman working on that we need to know about? Thank you, Commissioner. Um, and thank you to everybody who was able to join us for a discussion recently. Uh, the Congresswoman really values those and, and we appreciate that. Um, well, it's been a busy August. A lot of uh, members have been doing virtual meetings, some in-person events, um, very few, distanced, small, but they've, they've happened. And um, the meetings have largely, as I've said in the past, they've been focused on supporting small businesses, housing, childcare, um, unemployment benefits for those who virtually uh, or who desperately need them. And um, then over Labor Day, there was a lot of focus on uh, essential workers. Well, all labor, but especially our essential workers. Uh, the Congresswoman met with firefighters, which um, is, we are very grateful to, uh, especially at the moment. Um, Want to make sure they have what they need to, to perform their jobs. Uh, and so this week, the House is not back in Washington, D.C. They are um, holding a committee work week. So there are a lot of briefings and hearings and meetings. Uh, they'll be back in session next week uh, for, for votes. Uh, the Senate is preparing to vote on the skinny relief package, yeah. Sounds like there's a lot of negotiations that are still going to have to happen um, before that actually gets passed through. Uh, I read it was a $500 billion uh, relief package, which is um, much less than the Democrats want to see. So they've got, they've got work to do there. Uh, and they are also, negotiations are underway because on September 30th, um, funding of the government expires, so they're working on that as well. Um, it will likely be a continuing resolution, um, a lot of guesses right now, but uh, hopefully um, at least through the end of the year if they do go the way of the continuing resolution. So uh, that's those are the highlights from, from where I am. <laughs> Great, thank you very much, Joyce. Um, do we have questions for Joyce on behalf of Congresswoman Bonamici? Okay, great, thank you very much for that update. And I would love to go next to um, Representative Noble, but I think we just have his phone, so we'll, we'll hopefully you, have his phone with us. Welcome. You, you do have my phone. All right. Yeah, um, my, the internet out here is uh, with the wind is a little, um, less predictable than normal. So uh, that's the reason for the phone. So, you know, I, I really appreciate Lindsay's presentation on where we are uh, as a county and, um, and some of the issues with regarding to smoke right now. I uh, am very encouraged that we don't have any major fires in Yamil County and hope that we can keep it that way. Um, but smoke is definitely a health issue. Um, our office has been busy with a lot of um, some of the same stuff, uh, unfortunately, a lot of helping um, and advocating for people who have yet to receive unemployment benefits or PUC benefits. Uh, hopefully that will be resolved soon, um, but we will keep working and advocating for people. Um, and then a lot of uh, the other stuff that we've been busy with is getting ready for legislative days. And then um, many people may or may not be aware that that um, drafting legislation for the 2021 session, actually uh, the initial drafts are due later this month. So we are uh, busy working um, for uh, anticipating legislation in 2021. Uh, some of the specific work uh, that I've been working on is working with um, the other uh, co-chairs for the Human Services Committee and uh, looking at committee bills that deal with uh, child welfare, uh, services to seniors and uh, persons with disabilities. And then um, my uh, other co-chairs in the transportation realm and what does transportation look like in this time of, of uh, economic downturn, um, both from the, the statewide projects and then um, 
the I-5 bridge and, and uh, how we how we maintain our infrastructure. Um, and at the same time, um, make sure that uh, we're only spending money on things that are absolutely necessary during this time. So uh, a lot of a lot of pre-planning and uh, pre-work for legislative days coming up this month. Um, we have, uh, I understand, um, even though we had initially planned on a third special session in September, um, it won't be in September if we have one. Uh, so there's more work that we're doing in the um, police accountability, um, racial issues in the joint committee we're working on, and then uh, made some headway in the governor's task force and making some recommendations for police training. Um, so that's, that's kind of what we've been working on and um, just staying busy, trying to, to do our best uh, in this time of uh, this really strange time of 2020. All right, thank you very much, Representative Noble. Um, and before I open up to questions, I would just want to acknowledge that between Representative Noble and um, Pam Thompson, his chief of staff, they have been an amazing resource for people in Yamhill County who um, have not had any contact, successful contact with the Oregon Employment Department. I just wanna make sure that you all know about the, the, e the flow of emails um, that I see from uh, them to folks who are in desperate straits. So thank you, Representative. Absolutely, and, and uh, anytime anybody needs help, uh, we can't guarantee the result. We will absolutely advocate on anybody's behalf. Yes, including people who are not in your district. I just want to know. <laughs> well, I have no, yeah, statewide. Um, yeah, not everybody exactly. is, is doing the, the same amount of work. Abisha, I think you're with us. What would you like to tell people today? I am. Hello. Thank you. I actually just got back uh, today from my staycation of remodeling my kitchen, which is still in progress. But um, I live in South Marion County, and it, we definitely have the or you know blood orange red sky out here uh it truly is it looks apocalyptic and um just i live just outside of the canyon but many friends and family that live up the canyon and it's a scary day it's a scary time and the air quality is extremely poor it's we're definitely in the critical range um and i can feel it you know we can all feel it here my ears hurt my lungs hurt my eyes hurt and i've been inside all day so this is a a tough day. I'm also trying to preserve some connection with my internet by not having video on. So hopefully you can still hear me. Um, I do have a couple of things to share again, just kind of having, uh, getting my feet back under me from being out for a few days. But I want to share that SEDCOR is hosting our September Economic Forum. Um, of course, we're still doing these virtually. Uh, the next one is September 16th at 12 p.m. Uh, we invite uh, business owners, community members, and all of our partners to participate and join um, these webinars. We have not been charging for these webinars um, all throughout COVID, and we are starting a pay what you want pricing. So kind of a um, how you feel you want to support SEDCOR and these activities. Uh, we invite you to do that. Also, we invite you to join for free. Uh, we will have this next one, as I said, um, we're focusing on economic forecast, or maybe I didn't say that, but we'll have two speakers. Uh, we'll have University of Oregon economics professor, Tim Dewey, and the state of Oregon state economist, economist excuse me, Mark McMullen. I need to get my mouth to work today, Mark McMullen. So again, that's September 16th at 12 p.m. And you can find that on our website, uh, www.sedcore.com. Um, I can also send that out to you if anybody uh, would like me to send the link. Um, oh, actually back to the fire. I did wanna share that kind of as we were gearing up to get on this call that the governor announced that she will be having a press briefing, a wildfire press briefing today at three o'clock. Um, and that will be live streaming. Also, she did invoke the Emergency Conflagration Act for the Beachy Creek, Lion's Head and Holiday Farm fires, which are the fires out the canyon, uh, which of course means that additional firefighting resources can be deployed in those areas. So wanted to make sure I shared that. Uh, in addition, so, 
being back in the in the saddle, some of the earliest conversations I had this morning are around child care and expanding out and developing child care in Yamhill County. So, and I see Joyce nodding. I really appreciate Congresswoman Bonamici's um, activity around this very needed um, service. We have a couple of public-private partnerships that have emerged. Uh, we have some extremely talented professional service providers that are helping us put together some requests and guidelines for some of our city partners to help them understand how they can encourage the increase of legal child care service provision. Of course, the county is um, underway with their needs assessment. And I have seen just this morning uh, the surveys coming out, which I'm really excited about. So there is a lot of energy around this work. I had a couple of um, calls this morning with some partners on the phone here and the Council of Governments. And I have another call set up this afternoon uh, with Carrie Martin at the county and some other partners moving things forward. So there's just a lot of focus on child care. You've heard me say it now for weeks. I'll keep saying it probably for weeks. Um, and I think that's probably my best update without rambling. So thank you. And of course, happy to answer questions. Thank you very much, Abisha, and stay safe. Thank you. Do we have, do we have questions for Abisha? And welcome back, everybody. Um, I'm impressed that everybody who's here managed to get to a new Zoom meeting in the middle of it. So <laughs> thank you. Um, the one thing I'd like to know is, um, Who's the 960 phone number? Can you? All right, well, I'm not going to worry about it. We'll see. Um, OK, other questions for uh, Abhita? OK, great. Thank you very much. And um, stay safe out there. Uh, Takesha Wydro, what would you like to uh, speak with folks about in the West Valley besides the smoke? Yeah, there's definitely smoke out there right now. Um, I, we did confirm that the meeting um, about the car Christmas will be happening on October 1st at the Monroe Event Center at 6 o'clock. Um, right now, I'm focused on just getting the invites out, and because of the social distancing, we'll probably not be able to open it up broadly, but um, we'll, maybe we'll be able to Zoom it. That might work, but um, still mid-working on that, and that's just talking about the future of Sheridan's holiday lights, decorations, party, all that, all of those things. Um, but we were excited about it because we have a vision of having a um, Sheridan Christmas committee and that will carry on and that way that will move forward despite any other nonprofits that might not be able to support it any longer. So that's, that's mainly it despite the, besides the outside view right now. Yeah. <laughs> okay, great. And thank you for joining us and stay safe. Yeah. Yeah. Are you, um, do you live at Delphian? No, I live in McMinnville, so oh, okay. I had a very interesting drive this morning. <laughs> yes, yes, yeah. definitely. Uh, we'll stay safe in both spots. Yeah. Um, and I, I realize um, that in the midst of us losing um, our connection and losing our meeting, that Representative Noble was still in the middle of. Um, oh yeah, that's right. Us. Um, so I try to remember this. Representative Noble, do you want to add to your thoughts? Because I believe you were talking when I saw the countdown of this meeting is being ended. You know, I, uh, can you hear me all right? I uh, don't recall what my thoughts were, <laughs> what I was in the middle of. Um, but I, uh, I do appreciate, um, I do remember now, you were talking about unemployment benefits. And absolutely, if, if you know of somebody um, in um, friends or within, uh, you know, the jurisdictions that you're in that needs some advocating, some help in connecting with the department of, or the employment department, please let us know uh, an email and uh, put us in contact with them. Be glad to help them out. Great, thank you very much. And I feel like uh, Mayor Hill had a question or a comment for you, but I don't believe he is with us right now, unless he's 960. All right, 
Great. And then um, from your um, experience um, in public safety, do you have any thoughts for people about the wildfires and um, how they should be feeling and what they should go to for resources right now? Well, you know, there's, um, I don't know if many people know this and, and whether it's been said today, Yamhill County Emergency Management does a great job. Uh, Brian Young um, has done a, a fantastic job since he's taken that over. And um, there is a notification service. Um, I don't know if Casey, if anybody's mentioned that. So that there is a message that, that they need to get out. You can receive a text or a phone call. Um, I would recommend going on to Yamhill County's website um, and signing up to receive those notifications. So if there is an emergency, if there is an evacuation, it doesn't take much but a power line to go down and spark into a field, and then we've got a fire with this wind. And um, so the, then uh, Brian would be able to get a, a notification out to you. Um, so that I would recommend that as one safety aspect, just be prepared. And then knowing, you know, I, not everybody lives in the county um, in outside in the rural areas. But uh, water is important. Um, if you live on a well, have some water available uh, because power may go out and it may be a while before it comes back. Um, just, you know, all those things that you hear about um, from a preparedness standpoint, I think are very important. Check on your neighbors. Um, you, that can still be done still with the social distance, um, you know, and, and a health safety mindset. But check on your neighbors and make sure they're doing all right. Great, thank you very much, I appreciate that. I was gonna ask um, uh, Director Manfred if she wanted to tell us about the um, the emergency alert notification system. And so thank you, I totally spaced on it. Um, in fact, I had neglected to sign up our family for it. And so I did it last night as the, the sky was getting darker. Thank you very much. Um, I would love to go to the city of McMinnville now, um, and I'll start with Councillor Minky. What would you like to tell people in the community today? And then we'll see if you don't, if you uh, cannot overlap with um, Councillor Dravkin. We'll try hard. <laughs> uh, I mostly am kind of updating you. Uh, last uh, time we met, I was suggesting at the middle of the month we were going to be talking about House Bill 2001. We're actually going to be talking about it this night uh, sometime around uh, 6 o'clock tonight. Uh, so if anybody's interested in how McMinnville is handling it, uh, please dial into our Zoom meeting. Uh, to just be aware, we're discussing the airport project tonight and, uh, you know, our construction and stuff. Uh, moving on to uh, September 22nd, we have an MDA annual presentation, a UGB remand response update, and ordinance chapter 15 amendments, building rental and inspection program. Uh, on September 16th, uh, Jennifer Cooler is going to be talking to us about the McMinnville Reserve and Fund Balance Policy discussion. So, um, you know, we're trying to be as transparent and inform people as far in advance as we can. So just thank you for your, for letting me give that. Thank you, um, Councillor Mankey. And then Councillor Drapkin, what would you like to add to that? And specifically, do you have any updates on the motelling project? I do. Can you hear me okay? I guess I'm out for enough away. We have, um, can you hear me okay? Yeah, okay. Um, so I have both good news and not good news on the motelling project. Um, uh, start with the bad news. Uh, there was um, uh, an application in for about $50,000 worth of funding through the YCCO that did not come through. Um, that, that the YCCO did distribute that funding to a, another um, a, another need uh, in our area, but it did not come through for the motelling project. Um, so currently uh, funding for the motelling project will run out at the end of September. Um, there are other monies being sought at this time, but based on secured funding, we're gonna run out of money for that project at the end of September. Um, again, at this point, 55 households have been served, equaling 87 people. Um, and just a little bit about those that have been served. Uh, they're 50-50, male and female. We have a very high percentage of people who are recently fleeing domestic violence, um, which is uh, something that we know for our area to generally be true. That 
uh, our unhoused population is often um, uh, has a high percentage of those fleeing domestic violence. Um, we've also served a number of, uh, of uh, veterans um, and 100% of the people in the project have a chronic health condition. Um, again, and uh, Joy, I'll put this in uh, your, bug in your ear again. Um, we've had no outreach since the last meeting here where we talked about needing additional rentals. There's been no outreach to ICAP from the community at all. So rental shortages continue to be a limiting factor in getting people into housing. Um, and there have been some other great successes, including there was a family that has been unhoused for 10 years that achieved housing through this project. And if that is um, not momentous, I, I don't know what is. Um, do, do, do. There's a lot of notes here, hold on. Um, uh, the, I'll also say the uh, rent relief program um, has been uh, uh, has been going very well. Um, about fifty percent of the funds uh, for that program have already been expended, um, and in fact, those funds are going to end up running out. Remember, that's with a, a fair amount of housing being prepaid for families who are at risk of becoming unhoused due to COVID-19. Um, um, uh, that's a little bit in, look, Casey. That means I was supposed to call you, Casey. <laughs> when your name's written really big on this yellow pad. Um, As it should be. <laughs> uh, um, and of course, there's a lot of um, concern as the moratorium on eviction ends, even though I understand that that's a, a double-edged sword. Um, and uh, that's most everything on the kind of YCAP uh, moteling front. Um, this, uh, this smoke and these weather conditions, so we're, yeah. I have to be outside right now. <laughs> so um, adds an added layer of complication um, for our wine industry. Um, the smoke, of course, can have a negative impact on grapes. Um, we haven't really experienced what we know about smoke. Tank. We haven't really experienced enough yet in the Willamette Valley, but you know, there's smoke all over Oregon right now, and there are grape growing regions all over Oregon right now. Um, so that can be an effect on grape quality, but also from the few vineyards that have started picking all out, picking challenges um, where keeping workers safe, both from COVID, but also safe um, in terms of not becoming overheated is additionally hard this year. I, if you've ever um, seen a picking crew go out, uh, and pick a vineyard. Um, it's extremely hard work. People work very fast. They're also often running up and down rows, carrying buckets of grapes. So the addition of masks and keeping people um, hydrated and um, and breathing, and now add the the smoke on top of it, is a definitely complicated harvest season. Currently, uh, the folks that I've heard about are doing smaller picks. Um, so that they can break crews after just a couple of hours instead of maybe picking as much as they wanted to. So the reverberations of that are yet to be seen. Um, and then uh, uh, I also know that there's still a lot of conversation um, uh, happening around um, childcare and um, just so just for just for the community to hear that that is not an issue that's that's just done that um, that there are people at all levels, including a, a lot of people in, in that regularly attend this meeting that are continuing to address child care. Uh, 
uh, solutions and and do work for the citizens of Yamhill County and and McMinnville and the region. I think that's my, all I got. Great, thank you very much, Councillor. And Joya has a question for you. You're muted. Hey, Remy, thank you. Um, so, question for you regarding the home, the housing shortage, right? That you mentioned. So, you're looking for homes, you're looking for condos, you're looking for apartments that are for rent. Apartments for rent, primarily. That's what is needed, and specifically, right now, well. Um, First floor units are highly desirable because uh, there's, uh, there can be accessibility issues if there's second or third floor units. Mm -hmm. um, and we especially right now um, need uh, one bedrooms as well. So there's actually seven people that are ready to move into housing in that motelling program. We have not been able to find a one bedroom apartment that meets the guidelines that YCAP has to follow when they are securing that rental. Do you, do you, could you give me a little bit more idea? I, I mean, there's a there's a, an apartment complex over here by Evergreen that has empty apartments and there's signage all That's over, a, right? Have you talked to them? Do you know Evergreen Valley? I think it's what it's called. Um, so I don't, I haven't personally, I don't interface in between okay. landlords and YCAP. Got it. Um, but yeah, if you have a connection there and uh, please do connect them with either Mandy Goff or um, uh, Alexandra Hengen at YCAP um, okay. and they can start that, that process. They do have to meet YCAP's requirements. And they're probably pretty specific with regard to cost, et cetera, I'm guessing. Maybe. YCAP is held to a set of criteria in regards right. to rentals. Okay, I will. Um, I will reach out to uh, either one of them. Thank you, because I do. I don't know them, but I've got a phone number, so I can at least help Thank with you. that. Thank you. Yeah, of course, my pleasure. Awesome. Thank you very much, Joya. Um, and thank you, Councillor Drabkin, for all you're doing on behalf of people who need housing. So, especially keeping people moving through the hoteling project and the motelling. Yeah. And we'll work on it too. And thank you for the update on childcare. We're definitely, there are so many, as um, Abhishek noted, there's a lot of different efforts right now uh, from providing scholarships to uh, helping childcare providers set up facilities to helping license new providers. So a lot happening. Great. Any other questions for Councillor Jackin? And thank you for the update about the grape harvest too. Um, it seems like the, the heat was one thing, but now that there's uh, fire and smoke on top of it, it's a much, much uh, more complicated harvest. Be safe. And then um, Joy, uh, unless uh, there's anything more for Councillor Drabkin, I'd love to move on to Joya. Kudram, what would you like to tell people in the community? I'll be very, very brief. Um, two things. Uh, we still have some PPE, so uh, the um, businesses who need masks and we now have hand sanitizer. Uh, so thank you, emergency uh, management, uh, Brian Young, because uh, what a great team. Uh, I went over and I got another thousand masks and I don't know, I think maybe a hundred bottles of hand sanitizer. Uh, so any business out there that needs those items, give us a call at the chamber if you have fewer than 50 employees. If you have more than that, you need to contact the emergency uh, manager's department. Uh, and the other thing is Parkland um, Village, which is over here, um, they're having a senior gift bag drive through. So if you are a senior in a senior citizen in McMinnville and you're looking for some items, uh, get in touch with Parkland Village, talk to Marie, and uh, and they're gonna be doing this drive through on the 19th where you can drive in and pick up a bag of goodies uh, if you are living, uh, you know, obviously on your own and not at Parkland. So. That's all I've got for today. Thank you so much. Great, thank you very much, Joya. Mm -hmm. All right, any last thoughts from people? All right, we've made it through everybody in two different segments, so congratulations. And there'll be a new um, new link in the future since Mayor Wytoski has to use this uh, same account for her classes now. Whoops.
Um, but for people out in the community, be safe in this smoky weather. Um, we we all have to be on alert right now. Um, sign up for the, the alerts from the Hill County Emergency Management. If there's a fire in your area, that will let you know what you need to do. But Facebook is a good place for these things. Um, I am always nervous about the information that's presented to people on Facebook. But man, um, Representative Noble talked about, uh, I feel like about there's a fire in uh, ha uh, near Hag Lake in Washington County. And the Gaston Rural Fire District is such a great resource in that moment. Um, and they have a Facebook page. So these are really, really helpful things in this time. But remember to keep your phones charged. Um, remember to have water on hand. Um, our family, um, it, right as we went to bed last night, um, set up bags for ourselves to get out if we needed to. So these are weird things to think about in the middle of the Willamette Valley and in the coast range. Um, but it's better to be prepared uh, for the worst and then not have to use them. So um, think about all the things you might do um, and prepare for in the case of a Cascadia subduction zone earthquake. Um, these are the things that you will be prepared for then in the case of a fire. Um, but please be safe out there, everybody, and watch those ignition sources. Um, our fire departments um, and our fire districts around the county are working furiously um, to get on top of the little spot fires that keep showing up. And we don't need that be to add to that. Um, so think about that with your cars. Think about that with chainsaws, tow chains. There's a lot of different sources of ignition out there. Um, but we will again get through this together. But you got to be safe and watch out for your neighbors. Um, Representative Noble said it really clearly: is that you need to check on the people who are not as able um, to do what they need to do to be safe. So uh, think about your neighbors in these moments. Um, we do have a global pandemic in the middle of all this, um, and our county is doing a great job of lowering our numbers. Um, and our, our next call, we can talk about how good those numbers are. So um, we're, we're doing it, um, but remember to wear that mask. And out there in the community, if you know of a place for 500 Marion County evacuees, um, just uh, email me. <laughs> Um, and everybody knows my email address. So, and Joy, you and I can communicate about this too. Marion County has a lot of people who came through the Sandium Canyon um, who need a place to be. Um, I believe right now they're at the Oregon State Fairgrounds and they need spaces that are separate so that everybody can stay safe, including a couple of county commissioners, it sounds like. So, if there are no more comments, Joya and I will talk, uh, but thank you all. Thank you all very much. Remember that everybody who's here on this call is working for you every day. If you need something, reach out to one of them. All right, and we will see you next Tuesday. Stay safe, Casey, everybody. Oh, yeah. Thank you all, stay well. I'll call you, Commissioner. Thank you. Perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm.